book of John, chapter number 19. We begin reading verse number 16. The Bible says, Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We are so grateful that we can once again look into the perfect law of liberty. We are thankful that we are indwelled by the Holy Ghost of God, which speaks volumes to our heart, which illuminates the scriptures, which helps us, Lord, to walk in that soul liberty that is granted from the law of liberty. And God, we are thankful to be able to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Th Father, we're thankful where two or three are gathered in your name, you'll be in the midst. And God, when you're in the midst, things happen and things change and God is glorified. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd bless the reading of the Word of God. I pray that we would embrace its truths. Uh, I pray that, Lord, we would not turn our ear from the law, but, God, we would embrace and we would uh, enact, and, God, we would do what thus saith the Lord. Uh, Lord, because it's right, because it's what you command, uh, but more importantly, because we love you because you first loved us, and it's a privilege uh, to even be considered of God, let alone allowed to do what thus saith the Lord. Uh, now, Father, bless those out in the parking lot. We certainly appreciate them. Bless those that are watching via live stream. Lord, I pray, as Jordan brought out in Sunday school, that some, something wouldn't uh, uh, take any of our attention away from hearing the law. But God, we would be focused, we would um, uh, uh, be in tune, and God, we would uh, certainly look forward to what you have for your people. Uh, now, Father, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel, and I pray that, Lord, you would take uh, 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 the very thoughts you have given me for this hour, and God, you would expand it to the hearts of thy people. Uh, may it transform us. Uh, May the world uh, take note that even if we weren't assembled in the sanctuary, we have been with Jesus, uh, and they see something in us that they do not have uh, that would propel them to look unto thee and put their faith and trust in Christ. Uh, now, Father, bless as only you can. Uh, Father, the singing's been good. The Sunday school hour's been good. Uh, now, Father, I pray the preaching hour would be good, uh, and, Lord, you'd be pleased. Uh, and, Lord, you'd be glorified. Have your will and way, and we'll bless you and thank you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. I want to draw your attention to three things as a way of introduction. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice is the injustice uh, that we find in John chapter 19. Uh, in verse 15, we find uh, a, a pilot uh, has looked to the crowd. Uh, he has examined Jesus. Uh, another count says he finds no fault in Jesus. Uh, and he calls Jesus the king of the Jews. Uh, and now, uh, uh, in verse 15, it says, uh, But they cried out, Away with him! Uh, away with him! Uh, crucify him! Uh, Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. Here we find the injustice. We find the perfect one. We find the holy one. We find the one when he is examined, when he's examined by the law, when he's been examined by conscience, when he's been examined throughout his life. Uh, uh, all that can be said uh, is there is no fault in this man. Uh, 
Uh, but yet there was a rebel riser uh, who was a thief, uh, who was guilty of insurrection, uh, uh, who was guilty of murder. Uh, them they wanted to be set free, uh, but they wanted the perfect Lamb of God uh, to be sent to the cross. Uh, uh, can I say something today? Uh, uh, had he not gone to the cross, uh, there'd be no hope for you and I. Uh, it was the perfect will for him to go to cross, uh, but how man treated him was an injustice. Uh, uh, can I say there are some things that are perfect will of God for you and I, uh, uh, but when the world looks at us, uh, they'd rather have the filth of the world. Uh, they'd rather have the offscouring of the world. Uh, uh, they'd rather have the wickedness of the world. Uh, they don't want what we've got. Uh, hey, but I just stick with Jesus. Uh, I'll just stick with the will of God. Uh, I'll just follow where God leads. Because, uh, hey, it's all about Him anyway. Uh, we see injustice. Uh, Jesus did not get what he deserved. Uh, and can I say he did not get what he deserved uh, so that you and I wouldn't get what we deserve uh, uh, because we deserved hell. Uh, we deserved damnation. Uh, but Jesus took the injustice uh, so that you and I wouldn't have to face justice. Uh, we find the injustice. Uh, now notice the infliction in verse 18. The Bible says where they crucified him. By this point, Jesus has already been beaten in the hall of praetorium. Isaiah 52, 14 has already came to fruition. Uh, that prophecy said that he was marred much more than a man. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, his beard had already been plucked from his face. Uh, he'd already been buffeted uh, by the fist of Roman centurions uh, uh, where his face was bruised uh, and his face was swollen. Uh, his back had already been given to the smiters. Uh, He'd already been beaten. Uh, he'd already uh, 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 faced uh, uh, having his head planted with a crown of thorns. Uh, he'd already had a purple robe put upon him uh, and a reed in his head. Uh, and they mocked him uh, and they bowed before him. Uh, that had already taken place. Uh, now they'd led him down the Via Della Rosa uh, uh, to a place called Calvary, uh, a place called Golgotha. Uh, and there, uh, uh, the darling Son of God, uh, uh, stretched short his hands uh, and they pierced his hands uh, and they pierced his feet uh, and they raised the cross uh, and they suspended him between heaven and earth uh, and there they crucified him for you and for me we see the infliction we see the injustice now notice the insult in verse 18 and two others with him one uh, uh, on, on either side one and Jesus in the midst notice the insult the very rock of ages the darling lamb of God he who is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Uh, he who is omnipotent, uh, omniscient, uh, and omnipresent. Uh, he who has no equal. Uh, he who has none uh, that can even really approach his throne uh, without him uh, extending mercy and granting them the, uh, the access. Uh, he uh, who has already been in, uh, uh, faced infliction uh, and injustice, uh, they insult him. Uh, by crucifying him with two others. They put him in the midst of two thieves. Can I say, it's insulting to me that many times we're lumped in with other people that call themselves Christians. We're lumped in with others uh, that call themselves religious. Can I say, with us, Christianity is not something we choose to do. It is our very lifestyle. It is who we are uh, because we are identified with Christ uh, uh, because of what he'd done in our heart and lives one day. Uh, we see he's insulted. He's been inflicted. We see the injustice of John 19. But I want to focus on verse 17. The Bible says, And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. We find here that after Jesus has been beaten 
after he has been brought back before uh, Pilate, after Pilate uh, uh, calls him the king of the Jews and presents him to the, uh, uh, the Sanhedrin council uh, and all the people that had gathered there that night. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, Brother Jordan taught about the law of God. Uh, uh, them ver uh, trying Jesus at night broke the law of God. Uh, uh, but they weren't interested in righteousness. Uh, they weren't interested in holiness. Uh, they weren't interested in what thus saith the Lord they were interested in satisfying their own pleasures and after Jesus faces all of this he is sent sentenced to face the death of the crucifixion you and I as Bible believers you and I as uh, students of the Bible realize uh, 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 this was all uh, prophesied uh, aforetime uh, we knew that he would die the death of the cross uh, we knew what he would face uh, looking back we can see all of this uh, 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 he is doing the very will of God for his life but we see in verse 17 as they're leading him away the Bible says he bearing his cross now can I say he did not drag the cross up Calvary can I say when he got to Calvary he didn't kick and scream not to be nailed to the cross he yielded himself to the cross long before John 19 ever came into fruition he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world but as he is going up uh, Calvary's mountain, as he is winding down that two-mile stretch uh, from uh, the Hall of Praetorium uh, uh, to Calvary, uh, uh, the Via Della Rosa says he is bearing his cross, my dear friends. He didn't drag it. He didn't lift it in outstretched arms. Can I say he didn't even have to carry it. He could have said, cross, meet me at the, at the Calvary, and it would have went. But it said he bearing his cross. That cross was leaned upon him. It was upon his shoulders. And I want to preach with God's help this morning on the shoulders of Jesus. The shoulders of Jesus. Friend, let me just say this. It may be much too big for you and I to bear, but he can handle it. Huh? There's no stone too hard for the rock of ages to shoulder. Are you listening? There's no burden too heavy that he cannot bear. Uh, uh, when he went to, up Calvary's mountain, he bared the whole sins and wickedness of the world, of all mankind. Uh, and friend, he can handle whatever you've got. huh? But can I say, uh, on the shoulders of Jesus, first of all, you'll find redemption you'll find redemption. Him carrying that cross, my dear friends, uh, he did that so you and I could be redeemed. Uh, that cross, uh, that, uh, those two planks of wood uh, uh, that had been put together, uh, uh, friends, that was more uh, uh, than just a hideous sight for mankind to look upon. Uh, that was more than just a punishment to be inflicted upon a man. Uh, uh, that day, uh, that cross uh, uh, was uh, uh, history's most dark darkest event uh, but it was also uh, history's most significant event because uh, on that day uh, the God man uh, uh, the very son of God uh, uh, yielded his life and died on the cross uh, shed his blood uh, that sinners uh, could be saved from their sin uh, listen uh, uh, on his shoulders uh, on that day you found shame uh, they spit upon him uh, they mocked him uh, they cussed him uh, uh, they stripped him uh, hey uh, that day uh, he died in an open shame uh, that you and I can one day experience the glory of almighty God uh, hey he brought redemption to the sinner uh, you'll find shame uh, you'll find the stripes that he bore in his body uh, you'll find the suffering that he endured uh, you'll find uh, he thirsted uh, he was in agony uh, he was in pain uh, but he did it for you and I uh, that we might be redeemed uh, no wonder Isaiah said in chapter 53 verse 5 uh, but he was wounded for our transgressions uh, he was bruised for our iniquities uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him uh, and with his stripes uh, we are healed uh, hey uh, on Jesus' shoulders that day uh, you find more than a cross uh, you find redemption for fallen man uh, you find hallelujah salvation for the sinner uh, 
Say, why do you say, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord? Because uh, I ought to be in hell, but I'm not going. Because uh, Jesus paid my sin debt. Uh, and on his shoulders you'll find redemption. Can I say in the scriptures on Jesus' shoulder you'll find a realm or a kingdom? The Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, uh, the Everlasting Father, uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, can I say God's always had a government? Uh, his government, uh, my dear friend, was fastened under the law in the Old Testament. Uh, and can I say uh, Jesus talked about his kingdom while he walked on earth? Uh, but hey, hallelujah, today his government is the church. Uh, and you'll find in his realm, uh, Old Testament saints uh, are upon his shoulders. Uh, you'll find in his realm, uh, New Testament saints uh, are upon his shoulder. Uh, you'll find in his realm, uh, even tribulation saints uh, will be upon his shoulder. Uh, hey, listen, uh, all of them have uh, or will be pardoned. Uh, I'm glad I'm pardoned. Uh, I'm glad in his realm uh, there isn't big eyes and little U's. Uh, uh, there aren't the blue bloods uh, and the off scour. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, when his blood's applied, uh, I've been pardoned. Uh, he doesn't see me as I was. Uh, he sees me a fit subject for his kingdom. Uh, hey, not only are they pardoned, uh, they're purchased. Uh, I was on the auction block of sin uh, but I've been redeemed uh, I've been bought back uh, I've been purchased uh, I was bought with a price uh, the precious blood of Jesus Christ uh, I'm not what I used to be uh, I used to be a slave to sin uh, but now I'm a child of the king uh, hey I've got a pardon uh, I've been purchased uh, I'm in his realm uh, I've been promoted uh, I used to be nothing uh, now hallelujah I'm a joint heir to his throne uh, I used to be uh, of no nobility, uh, but now I'm of a royal priesthood, uh, a chosen generation. Uh, why, I'm in his kingdom. Uh, hey, but more than that, uh, I'll rule and reign with him. Uh, why, because I am his, uh, and he is mine. Uh, hey, upon his shoulders there's redemption. Upon his shoulder there's a realm. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Can I say this? Uh, 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 the Word of God makes it clear. On His shoulder there is rule. His A and His uh, Amen is all. He is the authority. He is the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Uh, Isaiah 22 says this, verse 22, And the key of the house of David uh, will I lay upon his shoulder, uh, so he shall open and none shall shut, uh, and he shall shut uh, and none shall open, uh, and I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, uh, and he shall be for a glorious throne uh, to his father's house. Uh, uh, can I say he rules today? Uh, it's not left up to public opinion. Uh, it's not not left up to compromise. Uh, it's not left up to what you feel or I feel. Uh, it's based on what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and he rules. Uh, can I say he rules with might? Uh, hey, there's no one going to overtake him. Uh, there's no one that can conquer him. Uh, there's no one that can challenge him. Uh, he is almighty God. Uh, uh, can I say he rules with majesty? Uh, there's no one that looks like him. Uh, there's no one with the much glory as him. Uh, John said his eyes were as flames of fire. Uh, his hair was as white as wool. Uh, his, his countenance was as brass. Uh, he said his voice was as many thunderings. Uh, there's nobody like him in his majesty. Uh, hey, we're going to his city, uh, and he's the light of the city. Uh, he shines so bright. Uh, there's no need of sun. Uh, there's no need of moon. Uh, there is no darkness there. Uh, there is no shadow of turning there. Uh, there is no shadow of death there. Uh, hey, why? Because of his majesty. Uh, because of his might. Uh, hey, he rules with might. Uh, he rules with majesty. Uh, and he rules with a mandate. Uh, all judgment has been committed unto him. Uh, he is the highest authority. Uh, he is uh, uh, the one uh, uh, in whom all will 
he'll give an answer to. Uh, hey, can I say on his shoulder there's redemption. On his shoulder there's a realm, there's a government. On his shoulder there is rule. What he says goes. Uh, I sure wouldn't want to have to stand before him persecuting his people, persecuting his church, uh, uh, stamping out his word, uh, changing his word, uh, harassing the things of God. One day they're going to look into those flames of fire and they're going to bid for rocks to fall upon them and the rocks won't fall, fall upon them and kill them. They'll fall upon them and make them more miserable. But they're going to stand before him and give an answer. Hey, listen, uh, 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 you and I will stand and give account of our deeds and our body done since we've been saved. Uh, but I'm glad, hallelujah, I don't have to face him uh, 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 and look uh, into those eyes of flames of fire for our God is a consuming fire uh, and it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. He rules. I thought about this. On Jesus' shoulders, you'll find restoration. Luke chapter 15 is a wonderful chapter. In Luke chapter 15, you'll find the lost sheep. You'll find lost silver. And you'll find a lost son. Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. Jesus is interested in lost things. He even gave John Newton, an old slave trader that got saved, the words of a song, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Uh, uh, Jesus is in the restoration business. He wants to restore sinners to God because that fellowship was broken in the garden by sin. He wants to uh, 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 restore prodigals uh, back to the Father. Uh, he wants to restore even everything that was tainted by sin. Uh, and Revelation 22, 3 says that new land we're going to, uh, there is no more curse. Uh, Jesus is in the restoration business. In Luke 15, we find a verse number 4. The Bible says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? Verse 5. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. I said, on Jesus' shoulders you'll find restoration. Now there's a lot of people who want to preach this lost sheep is lost without God. Um, but Jesus is talking about a hundred in a fold. Ninety-nine of them still there in the fold, and one of them goes astray. He's dealing with a prodigal. He's dealing with one that has known the voice of the shepherd, but has walked away from the voice of the shepherd. Now, I know you're super spiritual. I know you've got a halo. I know you've never had any problems. You've always done exactly what God wanted you to do. But I want to tell you, there's some of us uh, who hasn't always done what God told us to do. We always haven't been what we should be. Uh, uh, we haven't always said what we should say. We haven't always walked the way we should walk. Uh, we haven't always performed the way we should perform. Uh, uh, there's been times uh, 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 Jesus came, uh, and hey, hallelujah for the day uh, when I was uh, away from the fold and I heard his voice, uh, and he came and restored me back to his own. Uh, but in these verses... I want you to notice the preoccupation of the shepherd. The Bible says in verse 4 of Luke 15, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost? The preoccupation of the shepherd was not with the ninety and nine. Many have the mindset, well, I got ninety and nine, that's better than not having any. Or well, that's better than having 90. Or that's better than having 80. I got 99. That's enough. But see, Jesus wasn't preoccupied with the 99. He knew exactly where they were. He's preoccupied with the one that has gone astray. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, for the voice that cries in the wilderness, uh, for the one that's gone astray. Uh, hey, what a blessing uh, that Jesus is preoccupied with all of his sheep. Uh, he knew the 99 were safe. But he went after the one who might be facing a wolf. He went after the one that might be facing starvation. He went after the one whose very life is in jeopardy. We see he's preoccupied with the one. We see the preoccupation of the shepherd. Notice the patience of the shepherd. 
He said that he go after that which is lost until he find it. How long did he look? He looked long enough. He looked until he found it. I'm glad he doesn't give up. I'm glad he's faithful and true. I'm glad, hallelujah, that he is so preoccupied with the one that is lost uh, that nothing else has his attention till he restores that one. He looked until he found it. Hmm? Aren't you glad he kept looking for you? Hmm? We see the preoccupation of the shepherd. We see the patience of the shepherd. Notice the placement of the shepherd. The Bible says in verse 5, And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders. Now, contrary to some of these Baptist preachers around here, he didn't kick that sheep all the way back to the fold. Hmm? He didn't take that staff of his and beat that sheep all the way back to the fold. But well, listen, some Baptist preachers, all they do is kick and beat the folks. No. Where did he place him? He placed him on his shoulders. Uh, can you imagine that? He puts him, Clint, I'd put you on my shoulders, but you're too big. But you're not too big for Jesus. He, he put that sheep on his shoulders, and he's got them, them sheep. He's got, he's got his front paws in one hand and his rear paws in the other hand, and he's carrying that sheep. Now, I don't know how long he looked, but he looked until he found it. And I don't know how far that sheep went, but he wasn't with the 99. So all the way back to the 99, the shepherd's carrying the sheep on his shoulder. Now I know history says that if a sheep's got problems and it keeps wandering off, the shepherd will break its leg, mend the leg, and then put him on his shoulder. It doesn't say that he broke his leg. Didn't say they had to mend his leg. He found it and he laid it on his shoulders. Huh? Now get a hold of this now. This might help you. Uh, uh, he's got him on his shoulders. Huh? And I can see that uh, uh, lamb trying to look around. And why is he looking around? The Savior, the shepherd's just whispering in his ear, I love you. I missed you. Oh, you're so precious to me. Uh, that's why he's got him on his shoulder, uh, so he can talk to him, uh, so he can tell him how much he means to him, uh, so he can tell him why he came after him. Uh, I didn't want to leave you out here. Uh, you don't belong out here. Uh, you're one of my sheep. Uh, I'm your shepherd. Uh, uh, and hey, all the while he's hearing the voice of the shepherd. Uh, oh, it means so much to him uh, when he's put back into the fold. He never strays through that shepherd's voice again. Uh, can you imagine the placement? He put him on his shoulders. Uh, and look at the passion of the shepherd. Look what it said in verse 5. He said, and when he found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Rejoicing. He didn't say, Bless God, I wasted a whole day, I wasted a whole week, wasted a whole month for this sorry, no good sheep. Uh, he didn't say that. Uh, he said, Hallelujah, uh, I got my sheep back. Uh, my sheep's back in the fold. Uh, he's rejoicing. Uh, it goes on to say when he got back, he made big business over it to everybody else. Uh, my sheep that was lost is found. Uh, and he says uh, uh, that even there's rejoicing in the presence of the angel over one sinner that repenteth. Uh, when somebody gets right with God, Jesus rejoices. When a sheep that's gone astray gets back in the fold, Jesus rejoices. And if he rejoices, shouldn't we rejoice? You see, on the shoulders of Jesus, there's rejoicing. He rejoiced when that sheep got right with God. You know what it calls great revival? When sheep start getting right with God. It caused Jesus to rejoice. It caused him to come sit down in the midst of the fold and start just loving on the sheep. Huh? Oh, what a blessing that there's rejoicing on the shoulders of Jesus. There's rule. There's a realm. There's redemption. But I thought about this lastly. On the shoulders of Jesus, there's relief. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, if you wasn't raised in the country, you don't know what a yoke is. 
A yoke is that big thing they put the head of an oxen through, and they'd attach a plow to it, and the oxen would plow the field. And in some cases, they'd have a yoke where two oxen could be hooked up together, and they'd pull bigger plows to plow the fields. Jesus is telling any that would listen to him, any that would heed the call, he's inviting all to come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, all ye that are under so much pressure, all ye that are burdened down. He said, come unto me, I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon me. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy. Where's the yoke at it? It's on his shoulders. He said, on his shoulders you'll find relief. That burden you got, that problem you got, that heaviness you got, bring it to him. Cast all your cares on him, for he cared for you. He said, I'll take your heavy load, and I'll give you my light and easy load. Uh, you just hang out with me, you'll find relief. Uh, he said you'll find rest for your souls. Uh, can I say his yoke soothes heartaches? Yeah. There's been a lot of times when people face great heartaches. A loss of a loved one. Bad news from the doctor. A child that's gone astray. And I don't have the words to help them. But if they can just get it to Jesus... He's got a balm of Gilead. It don't make the problem go away, but it soothes you in the midst of your problem. His balm will soothe your heartache. He said, take my yoke upon you, for my burden's light. My yoke is easy. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy. I will give you rest. That's a promise from God. His yoke soothes heartaches. His yoke softens hardships. Nobody likes hardness. And I know the last couple of months, things have been hard. I know there are folks out of work. I know there are folks that are getting tired and not being able to go somewhere and just enjoy life. I know folks like to go to a restaurant or go see a show or like to just do something. Maybe go to the shopping mall or just do something. And all that has been stripped away. And it's left people dis distressed. And it's left people uh, depressed. And it's left people in a, in a bind. And there are folks that don't know if they're going to be able to put groceries on their table. And there are folks that uh, 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 just don't uh, uh, know. And you add to all that, we can't worship. We can't come to the house of God. We can't draw strength from God's people. Uh, I've got good news. Uh, you can draw strength from someone even greater than God's people. You can draw strength from God himself. Uh, uh, my dear friends, his yoke will soften your hardship. It soothes heartaches. It supports the heaviness. Sometimes you get so heavy hearted, you don't think you can put one step in front of another, and sometimes you get so heavy hearted, you don't want to put steps one in front of the other. Sometimes you just want to sit down by the side of the road, and throw in the towel, and give up. You're just heavy hearted. You, you know the Lord can help you, but you're just in such a state you don't even know if you want help. You're just miserable. The Lord says, just take my yoke. My yoke will support your heaviness. You see, when you yoke up with Him, you'll find a little more zip behind your step because His yoke will stir the halted you know what to get America going again? You know what to get America's churches going again? You know what to get life going again? Jesus. He can stir up the halted. Can you imagine what this world would be if everybody would take all this hardship and put their faith in Jesus? Hmm? Talk about making America great again. Hmm? You're talking about God's houses being full and in building programs. You talk about sinners flocking in and getting saved. It all starts with God's people yoking up with Jesus, letting him soothe, soften, support, and stir. And when the world sees how good Jesus' yoke is, he says, come unto me to them. They'll come running. But as Brother Jordan brought in Sunday school, how can we expect the world to run to him when we don't run to him? The Bible says for him to know to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. When our lifestyles are abominable before Christ, how in the world can we expect sinners to desire him? 
You know what sinners desire? They look at the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah and say, that's a good place to raise a family. What they need to see is on the hillside away from Sodom and Gomorrah, there's a place where the blessings of God flow. And that's where they need to come. But if they don't see any difference, why would they choose what we have over the shiny lights of the world? God help us to be the light of the world and they would see what yoking up with Jesus will do in a life. You see, that day when he bore his cross up Calvary, he bore exactly everything we'd ever need in our life. And he offered a better life in this life, a more abundant one, and the life to come. My dear friends, he bore you on his shoulders and he'll bear you every day if you'll just yield to the mighty hand of God. I thank God for Jesus' shoulders. He has shouldered me for 46 years. I'm glad I rest upon the shoulders of the rock of ages. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for being our Lord, our Savior. Thank you for enduring the shame of the cross despised it but you endured it for the joy set before you the joy was that you could put us on your shoulders thank you Lord for bleeding and dying for my sin and for the sins of the whole world God thank you for your realm your rule your rejoicing Lord thank you for your relief and your rest but most importantly for redemption. God, for somebody watching this that isn't saved or listening to it and they're not saved, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost, Ghost of God would touch their heart and they'd repent and trust in Christ. I pray, Father, for your sheep. Lord, those that are in the fold, Lord, bless them, touch them, help them, encourage them. Father, those that might have gone astray, Lord, I know you won't give up on them, Lord, help them to open their ears to the voice of the shepherd. And Lord, then help them to enjoy being put back on your shoulders. Now, Father, bless. Bless those that are in the parking lot, those that have tuned in, those few here in the building. God, bless. As Lord, we seek to be able to assemble again. Lord, if you don't show up, it's all in vain. So, God, we're seeking revival because we're seeking you. God, again, thank you for your shoulders, and thank you for shouldering us. Bless now, and we'll bless your holy name, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Lord willing, be back on the air tonight at 6 o'clock. Until then, keep looking up. Jesus may come, and we'll be at his feet before this day dawns. What a blessing that will be. God bless you. We love you. Thank God for you. Until tonight, keep looking up. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.